Some people are lucky in life. Some people make their luck. Some people are unlucky. What the left is always trying to do is take all of our immutable characteristics and say, oh, we should rejigger society so that these certain groups could be helped more. And, what, and that, all that, that kind of sounds right. But then, of course, to help certain groups, you have to punish other groups. So, I, can, I mean, the very simple example of this is look what's happened at Harvard. Harvard actually punishes Asian students for being Asian. That is what I would call discrimination. So what are they doing? They felt that they had too many applicants that were qualified that were Asian. So they said, no, we want to help other minorities. Well, that kind of sounds right. Okay, we want to help minorities. That, that we sort of think that's right. But then that, what that does is it may, you have to now punish Asian students who have worked hard, cared about family and everything else so that you help somebody else. So why should an 18 year old Asian kid who busted his butt, whose parents either were immigrants or maybe second or third generation immigrants who all busted their butt. It's not, no one gave anything. When, when everyone came to America, whether you came from China or Ireland or Italy or Greece or Eastern Europe or whatever it is, you, it, the story is the same. Nobody got anything when they got here. Everyone's busting their butts when they're here. So there are certain communities that then, usually based on some sort of ethnic lines, that their priorities are a little bit different. So broadly speaking, Asian communities work really hard, care about education, care about family. So they've succeeded and, and socioeconomically succeed. It's the, it's the beautiful American story. It's the story that we all want to share in, right? The idea that then you're gonna say to this kid, well, nobody gave your grandparents anything and they owned a convenience store and then your parents worked harder and maybe were the first ones college educated, but you guys have it too good. So now we're gonna punish you well, congratulations, you're just gonna set people up to hate each other based on race. So oddly, it's the anti-racists, the people that purport to be anti-racists, we wanna help these people who are actually injecting racism into society. Th this is a notion that we have to obliterate. It's a, it's a terrible idea. Yeah, I mean, I, I, think, I think a lot of people heard about that controversy and I don't even know where it is in terms of um, whether it's been dismissed or it's it's been settled. No, or the, the, the last I last I heard, the court said it's okay that Harvard's allowed to do what they want. And and I think Harvard's case was that they because they want they have to meet some sort of like a diversity quota or something like that. But the way they dismissed Asians from getting in is they derank them from a personality factor. So they had the grades, yeah. they had the extracurricular activities, but their argument was that. You know, at Harvard, we want people that are completely dynamic. So from a personality perspective, a lot of Asian Americans, they were, they were, you know, they had a lower ranking because of that. And it's just, uh, it's called yeah. discrimination. It's discrimination. That's what it's called. I mean, we should call it what it's called. You are saying to a certain group of people based on an ethnic background, oh, you played by the rules. You did everything right, but we view the world through an ethnic lens. Uh, we, the anti-racists, view the world through an ethnic lens, and now we're going to punish an 18-year-old Asian kid who doesn't deserve to be punished. So th this is also why social justice destroys every institution that it becomes part of. Harvard is crumbling. Uh, higher ed is crumbling. And in many ways, it's crumbling directly because of this, quotas and these nonsensical things. I don't care what your skin color is. Can you do your job? Imagine, well, I have a small business here. Imagine if I'm looking at resumes, and then I'm like, well, you know, I really should hire a person of this color or I better hire a queer person or something else. That would be prejudice. Yeah. I don't care. Let, show me your resume. Can you do the job? Do you work hard? When I interview you, do I like you? Do you seem like you're an honest, decent person? I'll hire you. So th when I say that the anti-racists have become the racist, that really is true because they then, they'll look at 10 resumes and go, okay, well, we got three white people. White people have had it too good. They've had mm. it too good, let's get rid of them. Ah, Asian guy, probably too good too. Jew, definitely too good, let's move them out. And now we're gonna pick out of these three. Well, congratulations, you're the racist. You're the bigot, you're, the, you're exercising prejudice. And the reason it will then destroy your company and all your institutions is then, in many cases, you will hire people who are less qualified. That's not to say that you can't be an underserved minority uh, black or Latino, let's say, and not be qualified. Of course you can. But if the guy hiring is going, oh, we're getting rid of a set of qualified people just because we're focusing on immutable characteristics, congratulations, we're gonna have worse pilots, we're gonna have worse doctors, or we're gonna have worse academics and everything else. So it's a, it's a really messed up, complex situation because the second you start talking about this, people say you're racist and it's like, no, 
I'm actually the, I'm, I'm the anti-racist in this argument. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a very confusing and, and, and gray area because I mean, it's a, there's a lot of lack of meritocracy there. But you know, I think um, the, the problem, the main problem with this is like I there. At what point do you stop, right? Because yeah, like when you people are paying now. hundreds of thousands. Yes, you stop now. You stop well, now. That's yeah, it. So, done. Well, what I'm talking about is you know you go, people pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to go to a prestigious school like Harvard. And I'm trying to argue for the other side, which is like, yeah, listen, like I'm coming from, let's say, a, a different country. My parents are paying hundreds of thousands of dollars. Maybe I don't want to go to school with 100% of Asians, right? Because part of the college experience, part like of the college another, experience. Go to another college. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm saying the point is that like right now, Harvard has about 10% Asian Americans, right? So why is that the quota? Why is, why is it 10%? You know, do we go to, if we go to eleven percent? Is that too many Asians? Uh, mm -hmm. Why can't we go to twenty percent? I understand that you can't have a hundred percent because you know maybe it's not going to create the full dynamic experience, which is part of really a big part of what college is. They can make that argument for sure, but why is it ten percent? I mean, I I guess they could make that argument. I I don't buy that argument. If a school happens to be 100% Asian or 100% black or something, if they were discriminating against people, if they were liter, if let's say a school was 100% Asian and they were simply not letting in white people based on the color of their skin, well then I would believe that that is discrimination. But I don't have an inherent problem if 100% of the most qualified applicants happen to be Asian, I have no problem with the school being Asian, the same way I would have no problem with it being black or Latino or anything else. If the people who are qualified are qualified, we're there. We could. We can always. I always think politics is best done done personal. So what? It, where, where are your ancestors from? Your grandparents or your great grandparents, whatever it is. South Korea. South Korea. Okay. Yeah. So was it? What, do you know what generation came here? Uh well, I would be. My parents came here, and then I was. I was. I was still born in Korea, so I came here when I was seven oh. from Korea. Okay. So so all right. So then you're a perfect example. I'm, of I'm this. the. So I'm the good not, person, yeah. Right. So it's not even that you are fourth generation, your great grandparents busted their butts and blah, 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 where they're going to punish that guy. Now you're, it's your parents were first generation. So technically, since you were born there, you're a first generation American. Why would you, Harvard, if you were applying to get in, would punish you? That makes literally no sense. You're an immigrant. I suspect your parents probably worked really hard, probably still do right now. And you've obviously got a good head on your shoulders and you're doing something you love. That's freaking amazing. But but why should you be for a policy that would hurt you? It just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's 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 uh, it's a hard argument to make. Right. And I'm surprised that you said Harvard won the case. Yeah, I believe Harvard won the case. And and that yeah. was the case, right? It was the personality deranking. Yeah, it had something to do with that. That that they were ranking not just on uh, academic scores. Listen, it's up to Harvard can choose whatever qualifications it wants. I'm not I'm not here telling Harvard that the government should be telling Harvard what they should be doing. I just think we should be calling out discrimination when we see it. Yeah. And Harvard is supposed to be one of our elite institutions that then proliferates the world with the great thinkers and great ideas. But by the way, we're, I mean, we actually are watching. Harvard is going to be like one of the first ones to really collapse because there's just so much bad stuff going yeah. on there. And Jeffrey Epstein had a lot of connections over there. There's like a lot of weird stuff going on mm. at Harvard. Um, but as an institution itself, as a private institution, it can do whatever it wants. But that doesn't mean we have to just sit quietly and pretend it's not happening. But I yeah. just don't like the idea that if you applied to Harvard, they would look at your resume and go, well, he's Asian, so it should be harder for him to get in. What? Yeah. I'm, I'm a, a first generation quota. immigrant. My, my, yeah, makes no sense. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, hopefully my personality isn't going to be deranked there, but. <laughs> <laughs> you seem pretty friendly, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's going to be a very tough time in the next five years because why would anyone pay the same amount of money to sit at their home and watch a lecture at these institutions. You can go to pretty much any website online and get the similar amount of education because a lot of these professors are putting out information online. You know, Jordan Peterson is obviously a professor himself and he's putting out a lot of the best content because he's not being censored by what a lot of these universities are needing him to say. And right now, you don't really get the social experience of being in a college. So 
I just don't know what's going to happen. Uh, curious, curious to know your thoughts on that. Well, I do sense that the institutions will continue to crumble. I think the average kid who maybe was getting $20,000 into debt every year to go to one of these elite institutions, you're right. They can watch Jordan Peterson lectures uh, and learn about postmodernism. They can watch Brett Weinstein videos and learn about biology. I mean, there's a gajillion videos out there that they can learn. So learning will be back on you. Uh, I am concerned about the socialization part, but I'm concerned about that not only at the college level, I'm concerned about that at every level. You got six-year-olds that are spending all day on Zoom right now. That's a problem. You got 43-year-olds that my only communication with my parents and my brothers and sisters, all, everyone's back east, is all through FaceTime. We, we, we are social creatures. We can't exist only through this digital thing unless basically we're conceding that the matrix was real and is real right now and that we're just the batteries for the digital world, which maybe we are. If you haven't watched the matrix in a while, I would re recommend watching it again. 